Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and in today's video we will be discussing the DISC personality type system and the four core personality types associated with DISC. Now I know there are more than four personality types, personally I believe there is at least 256, but still these are and they provide some basic ideas and some basic guidelines and some help to understanding people and relationships at your workplace, in your family and with friends and people in school. So if you want to look at this system, you'll want to find out your personality type and you'll want to find out how your friends work. So you'll want to look at this video and you'll want to share it with your friends. After you're done, you want to share it with your friends and you want to find out what personality type you, they are and what personality type you are. So what I found is in the disc, there are four personality types, the dominant, the influential, the steady and the conscientious personality types, the red, green, blue and yellow personality types. They are all they all share one thing in common. They all have a set comfort zone, a place where they feel the most comfortable being. Your personality type is based on your comfort zone and what you normally like to do and how you normally like to do things. When you act outside this comfort zone, which is very possible, you can behave any way you like, you feel less confident. Think about if you're more reserved or more shy, times when you had to go out and be more outgoing, when you had to hold a presentation or talk to a group of people. Reserved people tend to feel bad in these situations. Then think about outgoing people, people that like to be out there and have things going on and like to put themselves out there and like to be out there talking to people. Outgoing people often feel bad when they are in situations where they have to wait and where they can't go out and where they have to think things through and when things are moving more slowly. So it's based on your comfort zone, how you ideally want your world to operate. The outgoing types are the dominant and the influential types. The reserved types are the conscientious and the steady types. Outgoingness might have to do with some kind of warning receptors in the brain. Neuroscience has found that some people have more of the dopamine D2 warning receptors in the brain. And when they do, the brain responds worse to mistakes. When they notice a mistake, their brain is pumped up with warning receptors. Reserved people have probably more of these warning receptors and are probably going to respond worse to mistakes. This means one thing, conscientious types think things true or they have some kind of backup plan. Conscientious people, they like to measure and ensure everything's right and double check the data and then triple check the data before they do something. Study types like to have a backup plan or some kind of structure for things to ensure that mistakes don't occur. And they can to some extent appear too rule bound or too constricted in this. Dominant and influential types, they love to be out there. They like to make videos on YouTube. They like to do things. They like to talk to people. They like to put themselves out there in some way or form. So what does that mean? Well, for the dominant pe person, that can mean being result-oriented, being strong-willed, being competitive, being time-conscious, being resolute, being out there, being forward-oriented. To the influential type, it can mean things like, for example being enthusiastic, being inspirational, being interactive, and being interesting. Um, to the compliant type, the conscientious type, it has to do with being cautious, careful, and conscientious. And with the steady type, it has to do with being stable, supportive, and sincere. So outgoingness and reservedness is one of the major scales to understand the DISC personality types. The other important scale to look at is control. With control I mean how organized you are in what you do and how decisive you are. What you can find is when you look at the influential and the compliant or conscientious types, they like to brainstorm. They like to come up with ideas. They like to check over and over if something is right. They like to look at the data. What's the information? What are things saying? What are what does the facts say? What do the numbers say? They like to have ideas. They like to think. They like to spread information and to look at information. Influential and conscientious types both share this drive towards ideas and morals and ethics and just looking at it. 
where the steady and the dominant types are all about making decisions and having structures and doing things in a certain way. Dominant types believe things should be done in a certain way and according to a certain structure, and they are more assertive and strong-willed. When other people disagree, they are more pushy. They will say, my way or the highway. This is how we should do it. This is the rules. This, this is the law. This is the best way. Steady types will have a system for things. They will have an organization for how they want things to be. And when this order is threatened, they will feel worse. They will feel bad internally. Now, control is sometimes misunderstood with uh, being in some way a judger or a planner. But planning is just one control strategy. You can also be controlling in the moment. You can also be controlling with how to adapt an idea into reality. There are people that are controlling in the sense that they like to have plans and they like to work towards a plan and they like to think 10 years ahead into the future or into the past when making a decision. There are also adaptive types that want a painting to be right there and things to be in that right in that place and everyone should be standing there at that time and in this moment when this is happening you need to do that and then at that moment you need to do that. So you can be controlling in different ways. Control only has to do with wanting the world to be in a certain way and if you have a strong opinion of how you want the world to be and if you are quick at making decisions and coming up with how you want things to be and quick at putting your decision into practice and confident in your ability to make decisions and to stick by decisions, you are going to be more dominant or more steady as a person. A person that is less confident and less decisive, like the influential or the conscientious type, has probably had worse experiences of planning. They might have tried to plan and perhaps they failed to execute their plan. They might have tried to wait before they did something but then they got uh, unsure of themselves or they got hasty or they started to get restless and then they went out and did it anyways. So what you'll find is influential and conscientious types have due to their environment and due to their, up their upbringing had worse experiences with control. They overall feel less control and when you feel less control you all tend to engage in one habit. What do you do when you're not sure of yourself? Or what do you do if you don't know what to do? You ask other people for feedback. What do you think? What would you do? How would you do this? Influential and conscientious types all share this trait. They will ask for other people's opinions, and they will ask for data, they will ask for input, they will ask for information from others. They will put some ideas out there, but they won't determine which one is right. They're less confident in their ability to determine which of the alternatives is the best, so they leave that up to other people. They like to engage in the brainstorming process and thinking of different thoughts and the thinking about making a decision and they prefer to leave the decision to other people. So conscientious and influential people, they tend to leave decisions to others and they tend to be less confident in themselves. That means also being less confident, taking power for yourself, telling your boss, I need this much, I need this kind of salary, I want this amount in that to that extent. Influential and conscientious people struggle to bring power to themselves and bring control to themselves. They struggle to establish territory. They struggle to say no to people. They struggle to set order and organization around them. They struggle to set boundaries in relationships to other people. The conscientious person can find themselves being the helper in everyone's lives. They constantly have to help other people. They constantly have to listen to other people. They constantly have to be there for other people. And they are the moral compass of everyone around them. The influential person is the person that is always trying to take care of everyone else. Always trying to give everyone else a fun time. Always making sure everyone else is happy. Even to the extent where they can, to some extent, become used or controlled by other people. So that's the danger. What's the danger for the dominant and the steady types? What you'll find as a dominant or a steady person is being too sure of yourself or being too controlling. You can find yourself restricting yourself or keeping yourself from new opportunities because you have too strong of a mind. People don't dare to disagree with you even when you're incorrect because they know you might get upset. People don't dare to challenge your traditions or your routines even if they have better alternatives that you would enjoy more. So to some extent, 
if your environment requires you to change or if you're engaging in a bad lifestyle, you can cling to that, you can hold on to that. And sometimes the boundaries you set up can keep you from relationships with other people and can keep you from being a good team player. When you look at the influential and the dominant types, they're both very out there. But since the influential type is less assertive of themselves, but more outgoing, basically that means they're more inspirational. Everyone likes them. Everyone agrees with them. Everyone watches their videos. Everyone is always there. But nobody is on their team. Nobody is camp that guy. Nobody is the declaring allegiances. Nobody is saying I'm on that side versus that person. The influential person has a lot of sway with a lot of people and everyone likes them and everyone agrees with them and they agree with everyone else and they're working together with other people. You know, one of the first steps to getting influence is giving other people some power. People are more likely to listen to you and to do what you say if you tell them they are correct. If you listen to people, if you let them have influence. The best way to get influence is to give other people influence. That's how the influential person works. They spread ideas and they are influential through their ideas and also because they are open and minded enough to listen to other people's ideas in return and to collaborate and to have some kind of discussion going. The dominant person is much more of a boss. The influential person is much more of a brainstormer. The dominant person sets a baseline for everyone else. They show an example for how we all should be. They show some kind of backbone. They are strong-willed. They say, everyone should be like me. Everyone should do it this way. Everyone should try to follow these rules to be more successful. This is how you be more successful. Stop being lazy. Dominant people think more in black and white, in stronger terms. They are more decisive, they have stronger opinions, and they are more assertive about their own opinions. They are more likely to believe that their opinion is right and correct and true and that yours is wrong. And they're more likely to disagree with you and to think that you're wrong if you're wrong. So the dominant types all share this habit of being decisive and of being direct and of being doers. They can to some extent appear domineering and too demanding. They want everyone to do things in a certain way and at a certain time and too fast and too much and you're lazy and you're slow, you need to hurry up. The influential type can to some extent appear too lazy and too easygoing, too impulsive. They rush things, they, are, they skip ahead, they ignore things, they, uh, they talk too much. <laughs> there is this... Uh, there is a noticeable clasp and the problem is you have a natural way of responding to problems but that way is only good when your environment supports and rewards that it is only good to be dominant when you live when you are correct and when you're doing the right thing and when that gives you more power and when that gives you more status and when that brings better goods to society and to the people around you it's not good to be dominant if you are basically um pushing everyone towards the edge of a cliff. It's good to be influential if that brings out new ideas and gets people thinking, gets a creative discussion started and gets people learning. But it's not good to be influential if you're spouting a bunch of bullshit without facts, without thinking, without backing up anything you say and without taking the time to make sure that what you're saying is correct. If you're basically brainwashing people and making them believe in a bunch of nonsense. It's good to be conscientious, but only if that can help you avoid negative feedback, negative mistakes, and can help you make sure that you found the right data. It's not good to be conscientious if that is keeping you from good new opportunities and things that will give you some kind of positive feedback. It's good to be steady, but not if you become too constrained so that you miss out on new opportunities and new chances in your life, and if that keeps you from, to some extent, learning new things and having new experiences and gaining uh, new friends and new making new connections and basically finding ways to improve your life. So each personality type depends on how 
your environment responds to that. Each strategy is only good to the extent that it works for you. It actually gives you something. If it's not, you should work on changing it or you should work on changing your environment. If your response isn't working, you have two choices. Either you have to find a way to change your environment so that you can remain dominant and remain in control, but still get critical feedback and evaluation and some kind of structure and some kind of steadiness and some kind of routine to ensure that things are well. If you are influential, it's good to have people behind you that fact check your data and think people that control what you do and make sure it's right. And it's good to have some kind of systems and some kind of rules so you don't basically uh, speak a bunch of nonsense. These are all important grounders. They're ways of grounding yourself and making sure that you retain your normal comfort zone. You do what you like to do. You do things the way you like to do it while acknowledging that sometimes it's necessary to act in different ways. What you want to do when you're dealing with other people and when you're dealing with situations beyond your comfort zone is you want to set reasonable expectations for yourself. Yeah, I don't like change, but I will do some change. I will agree to some of the changes, but not all of them. Yes, I like going out there and talking, but I will wait one day before I do something or before I act. I'll take one step back and think about it for a little longer before I do something. Focus on those like smaller victories, focus on those smaller challenges, work on reasonable expectations for yourself based on your current level and where you are at in your life. And you don't really need to aim for balance. You only need to work for optimality. That should be your core concern. An optimal lifestyle, an optimal mindset for the situation you're in, for the people you are dealing with right now and for the situation you have in your life right now. How you want to live and how you ideally want your life to be in this moment. That's what you want to work towards. Reasonable expectations towards an optimal way of functioning based on your current situation and the people you're dealing with in your current lifestyle. I got a new job recently and customer service. I will be dealing with a lot of different customers and different clients and different people. It's a little outside of my comfort zone. Honestly, it is because there is a lot of rules to work with. You have to abide by and be very strict. You have to follow, you have to map everything you do. You have to tell everyone why you do what you do and that's outside of my comfort zone. It could easily turn into me becoming harsh of myself. You have to, from 0 to 100, switch and become more steady. For me, it's so much easier to work from the position where I am now. What good can I do the way I am right now? How can I use my current strengths and my current development to my advantage? How could I, what small adjustments do I need to make to make this work? The disc is great when you're looking for a short-term improvement in understanding of your friends, your co-workers and your family. It provides a quick discussion of four basic differences in people and how they work. And there are so many others to talk about. For example, are you more optimistic? Are you more pessimistic? Are you more uh, hedonistic? Are you more about pleasure and enjoyment? Or are you more about morals and values? There are a lot of systems that work with more than the four personality types, such as the Myers-Briggs type indicator and the big five. And it's worth taking a look at these different systems as well to get a wider and deeper understanding of yourself. And I've made a lot of videos on my YouTube channel about these different types. I have a lot of content on ericdor.com, including personality tests, where you can find out about your personality type and your current situation and your current level of development. So. Thank you all for being here and for listening and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe and stay tuned for future videos on the topic of personality psychology and personal growth and personal development. Thank you and goodbye.